Hey, it's Kunda here. I want to tell you a bit of a story. And I'm wearing a pretty special shirt to do it because that's the focus of the story. So, story time. Let's get comfortable. So, I'm going to have to go back a little bit to get to where I first got involved with Barefoot is Legal, the organization on the shirt. So I've been a hippie more or less my entire life at art. I've had long hair since I was in like grade five and one of my earliest memories is my dad telling me I should cut it because I look like a tramp. Before that my parents kept my hair cut fairly short or whatever whatever. Since then except for once I've had long hair. I cared about environmental issues through high school and after high school. At a music festival, I found that footwear really wasn't worth the hassle, especially at a music festival. So that festival, I decided I was giving it up. Still haven't really gone back way it is. And I've used the name Earthshod on a lot of my social media. And by the time you're watching this, I may not be using it anymore. And it's not because I'm living much less barefoot anymore. I'm still as barefoot as I've ever been. One little point is that I remember Early in my barefoot advocacy, I reached out to the Provincial Human Rights Commission and I wrote them a fairly lengthy letter. And in that letter, they basically dismissed me because well, there were a few reasons they cited, but one of the reasons was that I said that I'd be willing to wear footwear for a sport. And when I said that, what I had in mind was like ice skating, skiing, snowboarding, that kind of thing. But skateboarding is a hell of a lot safer and more fun when you're wearing the minimum protective equipment, which I would say is skate shoes. Just have more if you're doing more extreme shit, but I've found that I, I can get around barefoot on a skateboard. I can't improve barefoot on a skateboard. I'm stuck where I'm at, basically. So, that was a bit of a tangent. I got into barefoot living after high school. After that music festival experience, I decided to live my life pretty well full-time barefoot. And I would push myself largely because of the asshole-ish behavior of some people saying that we live in what's called Canada. It gets cold here. In the winter time, it can get minus 20, 30 Celsius, and there were some people who were saying that, including the Human Rights Commission, that if I were to expect to be taken seriously, I ought to be living according to my barefoot principles and giving myself frostbite until I'm walking around on the nubs of my shins was more or less, well, it's more or less the impression I got from the Human Rights Commission. Also, kind of the attitude that a lot of people treated me with for a long time. And in recent months, I've kind of just decided to not be about that shit. People can be assholes if they want to be assholes. I'll just straight up tell them to not be an asshole, and that's what they're doing. And it took me 4 minutes and 20 seconds to get to Barefoot is Legal, which... I discovered shortly after I gave up shoes at the time, it was more or less a Facebook barefoot peer support group, which was awesome. It was the barefoot movement. Before my time, it seems like there was a little more of like centralization and then people broke off to do their own things. Some foot people with some certain interests went one way. Other people that just wanted to live their lives and hang out and post on Facebook about what they're doing went another way. 
And another example of a different direction people went was the barefoot is legal direction, which was advocating for the rights of barefoot people to be barefoot all the time and not be harassed in public spaces or businesses and to be treated with the lack of discrimination that everybody else expects to be treated with and to not be discriminated for their identity. And it, it was really cool having a community like that. And I, I feel like past this, it's going to sound like me shitting on Barefoot is Legal. And I'm really not intending to do that, not trying to do that. And 98, 99% of the people that I talked to and met through Barefoot is Legal, awesome people. I love talking to and interacting with all of them. They were great. Some of the discussions that were had in the groups awesome but one of the consistent things that i've heard from and talked about with people in the group and people who have left the group and there are a lot of barefoot people who have left barefoot is legal is that the biggest problem they have is leadership issues and i want to tell you a little bit about how it went from the barefoot is legal that i just talked about and praised for all those good things to where it's now a bit of a scammy personality cult, or attempting to be a personality cult. It, I don't want to say it's masquerading as an advocacy group, but it almost is. And an advocacy group that evicts the people who it claims to be advocating for, for having a non-disruptive but differential opinion. It's hard to call it an advocacy group. So, Barefoot Least Legal was going great for a while. It was just increasing popularity. The Facebook group was building. They had a website. They were just kind of gradually trying to improve everything. They wanted to have infrastructure for people to complain about being kicked out or treated like a dick by businesses and that way they basically wanted to have a credible organization where people can call up and be like this restaurant treated me like a piece of trash because I had no shoes on in their store can you talk to them and see if you can make any headway with them and that's great I think it's a totally admirable goal, admirable goal for them to have it didn't end up being like I, I tried to use that system a few times and I even signed up for their VIB program which was basically like a premium membership the impression I got was that anybody could go through these channels and utilize barefoot is legal to kind of try and provoke change in businesses and make them more inclusive to barefoot people I didn't have any luck either as a regular member nor as a paid VIB member. And, well, I still have these cards to go along with the shirt. And around here, I'm pretty sure I have my founding member VIB membership card. But after the first year of membership, I was like, this really isn't doing all that much for me. I was... Like, I didn't have the money to be spending what worked out to be, like, 60-something dollars Canadian on an advocacy, well, on this. And, yeah, I reached out to them. I was like, how do I, like, withdraw my VIB membership and stop paying for it? Really, what they should have told me is... Just cancel it on your PayPal and good to go. That's not what they told me. Basically, I was directed to their more or less money person for the organization. We had a little bit of a back and forth, a lot of humming and hawing. It was basically, uh, I'm not really sure. Let me get back to you. Let me get back to you. And didn't really get back to me until after... The period elapsed and PayPal had automatically 
withdrawn a second year's membership. They wouldn't refund the second year's membership to me, so I just coasted through it and tried to work with the group, tried to utilize the services as a VIB member for the last year, and it just, by the end, I ended up kicked out of the Facebook group while still being a paid member to the website and the organization. Like I said earlier, not for being disruptive, I more or less just offered a differing opinion. Mentioned that I've seen organizations do this. We, It's not... Basically, you say anything that the leader didn't like, and he took it as a threat, and he was just censor happy. I don't know what's going on in the group anymore. It could be on track to be in that these what the leader wanted was to have enough money to set up booths and health fairs all this kind of thing they may be on track to that they may be growing in members i don't know i haven't been in the group they also might be a train wreck that's where it seemed like the direction they were on was going to take them when i was on the way out of the group so i don't know i hope all the best for them I hope they sort out their membership issues. Like I said, I'm not trying to shit on them with this. This is just me explaining that I'm still here. I'm still barefoot. I'm still going to be barefoot. For the foreseeable future, if not for the rest of my entire life. But... I can't really justify spending the time on people who treat me like an asshole when I'm only trying to do the best I can and help try and make all the all the organizations I volunteer with better and yeah just doing what I can so let me know what you think if you're a barefoot person who is interested in advocacy and activism that sort of thing go check out barefoot is legal Maybe don't tell them that I sent you, but uh, I hope they're doing well, and yeah. I, I care about barefoot people. I, I think it's legitimate. I understand a lot of people don't, but it is what it is. Maybe there'll be more videos to come. You can see some old ones in my channel. Maybe I'll have this in a playlist. I don't know. Thanks for watching this. Have an awesome rest of your afternoon whenever you're watching this. Later.